How do I fake a dropped snapshot effect on my web page using CSS only? This is what I mean. This see this this image right here. Um, it sort of looks like it's got this white border, so it kind of looks like one of those old-fashioned snapshots. And behind it, there's this drop shadow, so it kind of looks like you've just sort of dropped this photo onto your page. Um, how do I do this using CSS only? Um, you might know how to do it in Photoshop, actually. You could create a, you know, you could import this image into Photoshop and you could add a border and then you could add a drop shadow and make it a, have a transparent value, background and blah, 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 blah. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But did you know you can actually do this in CSS? And let me show you how. Um, let's actually, there's a few things we need to do. Let's kind of approach this step by step. The first thing we need to do if we look at this is what we're starting with we just have this plain image right here and just see that's actually still the same image um, let's start by adding a border okay and that's actually um, fairly straightforward it, but in order to do that uh, because I have multiple images on my page here I have this image right up here and then I also have down here I've got all these other images down here we obviously we don't want to apply this effect to these images down here so we need to find a way to just apply what we're about to do to this image right here so I have an idea there's different ways of doing this but I like I'd like to create a class I'm going to create a class called snapshot and I'm going to just and this is I'm going to be able to apply this class to my image and in fact to make it very specific this is just uh, a, a you might see this on on CSS style sheets and I want to do it so that you understand what it means when you read a CSS style sheet I'm going to put the HTML selector image right here and then I'm going to go period right after and then I'm going to write snapshot and what this is is that I'm creating a class that is specific to the image selectors on my uh, on on my 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 in my HTML page, um, does that make sense? Um, it's not going to apply to every single image, but it's going to be a class that I can use on images. I hope that that makes sense. Um, inside here, I'm going to define a few things. I'm the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create that border. Okay, um, so let's make a border width of about 10 pixels. Okay, uh, the border style in this case style is going to be solid we don't want dashed oh look what I forgot I forgot to put my semicolon there ah, kids pay attention okay next thing we want to do is we want to do border color um, and this is just going to be solid white so I'm going to go hashtag FFFFFF that's the hexadecimal code for white okay um, let's start with that and of course I've created that class but I haven't applied it so we need to actually go apply it in our code and the way that we're going to do that is we're actually going to inside here we're going to now add the class snapshot and I know what you're thinking is like whoa wait a second but you already applied the class right that's right you can actually have multiple classes and all you need to do is just type them all out in order we say class is going to be right and it's also going to be snapshot so let's hit save and let's hit reload here and what we expect to see is we expect to see a white 10 pixel border all the way around this image let's see if that's that's what happens there we go that's exactly what happens so we're part of the way there we've added the border um, the next thing we we'll want to do is let's go ahead and add let's do the easiest thing first we already know how to do drop shadows so let's go ahead and add a drop shadow to that now um, so let's go back to Text Wrangler, and I'm going to stay in CSS. I'm going to keep adding my my um, uh, the, the different attribute values to this particular selector here. Um, I'm going to add a box shadow. Um, so that's the code. In fact, it's remember it's box shadow, and the first value is the horizontal offset. The second value is the vertical offset. Um, the third value is the blur radius, so let's do 15 pixels, that looks good. And the last value is that RGB v, uh, RGBA value that's going to be our, our color. And so let's type RGBA, and we're going to go again, it's just going to be black, and the opacity is going to be 0.3, let's say. Okay, these are just, I mean, I, I've, I experimented with these colors beforehand. You can experiment yourself with the offset just to find something that you like. But let's go ahead and apply that, and let's see what that looks like. So we'll go back to the page we're working on. We're looking to see whether or not the, sh the drop shadow appears here. Let's hit reload. 
And there we go, we've got our drop shadow. Now what's happening is that our drop shadow is sort of overlapping on this part right here, and we don't want that. We actually want a little bit more margin around everything. So we can adjust the margin as well. Um, margin in this case is going to be, let's start by, by just adding 10 pixels around everything. Or well, let's maybe make it 20 pixels, okay? Let's see what that does. That's just going to add a margin, an extra space of 20 pixels around the entire image. And let's see what happens if we do that. Hit reload. Okay, that's better. It's still not quite right. I think we're going to want to tweak that a bit. And let me show you a neat trick. Um, we can actually specify this. If I just do margin 20 pixels, that's going to add 20 pixels of margin around the whole thing. If I want to add like different amounts to the top, bottom, left, and right, I can actually do that. Um, the, I can actually do that by having multiple values in here. Let me show you what I mean. Um, in fact, this is what it's going to look like. The first value I put in here is going to be, if I have multiple values, the first value is going to be my top value. The second value is going to be the right value. The third value is going to be the bottom value. And the, the fourth value is going to be the left-hand side value. So when you're, think, when you're remembering it, just start at the top and think of a clock, OK? You go clockwise or clock, clockwise around the image. So the first value is up here, second value is here, third value is here, and fourth value is there. That's if you have four values, then the browser then considers it to be top, right, left, bottom, right. Sorry, oh my goodness. Top, right, bottom, left. Yes, there we go. Okay, I do know what I'm doing, trust me. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually say the top one I'm going to make 10 pixels. The right-hand side I'm going to go... I'm going to stick with 20 pixels. Uh, the left hand, or the bottom, I'm going to do uh, 40 pixels. I really want to put a little bit more space between, you know, here and down here. Um, and then the final one here, we're going to do 30 pixels. Okay, so see what happens? When I just had the one, it applied it all the way around. But if I go ahead and type out four, then the browser is pretty smart and realizes, oh, you mean top, right, bottom, left. Let's hit save, and let's see what that looks like. So this will probably shift around a little bit more. There we go. So now it seems a bit more centered in there. We're very close. The only difference now, in fact, look how close that is. I'm going between the two, and we don't even see a difference. That's how good we got. Wow, that's awesome. Um, now we need to tilt that. We need to tilt this image. And this is a neat trick. This is using CSS3. Um, I want to give you a warning here. What we're about to do currently, as of today, is not going to validate in your validator. Okay? That's all right. Okay? The reason for that, and I'll explain, uh, I'll, I'll explain it as I go here. We're going to go in here, and I'm going to introduce the concept of vendor prefixes. Okay? Um, what is a vendor prefix? A vendor prefix is a little kind of piece of code that you add in front of an attribute in CSS that makes it so that specific uh, web browsers will understand it. Okay? And these codes correspond to, the reason they're called vendor prefixes is that they, there's different prefixes for different web browsers. Um, and the different ones are, there's the dash moz prefix, okay? There's also the dash webkit prefix. There's the dash o prefix. And there's the dash ms, oops, ms prefix. And um, Moz is for Firefox. WebKit is for Chrome and Safari. Uh, o, o is for Opera. And MS is for Internet Explorer. Um, so let's just set that aside for now. I want to show you the actual code, the actual attribute. Um, the actual attribute is called transform rotate. OK, and then we actually have to put a little, we have to specify, well, let's just do minus 5 degrees. Ah, let's spell that right. Oh, what did I do? I forgot to put the 5 in there. OK, transform rotate minus 5 degrees. OK, what that's going to do is that's going to rotate my element 5 degrees kind of counterclockwise. That's what that minus is. Um, this will eventually work. This is kind of, this is a CSS3 thing. The problem is, is that none of the 
web browsers currently sort of support this as is. You need to put these vendor prefixes in front. So you need to do it this way. You need to actually have this vendor prefix in front and then put transform rotate. So I'm going to do that for each of those. So unfortunately, it means a little bit of cutting and pasting. Um, but that's that's what happens when you're, you're using sort of bleeding edge code. Um, the reason that this won't validate, OK, is that the, the web validator doesn't um, recognize vendor prefixes as being valid code. OK, um, eventually, the different prefixes won't be required because different browsers will update themselves to the point where they actually do recognize the the transform rotate attribute value pair um, um, without that prefix. But for now, you need to put the prefix in. Um, don't panic if your code doesn't validate. If that's the only part of your code that doesn't validate, then you're fine. OK, remember, the validator is just a tool. It's a tool for you to understand. If you understand why your code is invalidating and you're OK with that, that's fine. OK, um, it, it, you know, that's that's just the way it is. So let's see if this works. OK, so we've added these different codes and this would be a good use if you wanted to just put a little note to yourself here why you put this. You could say for say um, for Firefox, you could do that. OK, and then you could add that to, you know, for Chrome and uh, Safari like that. Um, you could do that for all of those if you wanted to. And that would just be a nice little reminder to yourself. OK, I won't bother writing all of them, but you could see that. That's a whole lot of code, isn't it? OK, well, let's see if this works. We're going to hit save. I'm going to take a look at this page. Are you ready for the moment of truth? All right, let's see if this works. We're going to reload and there you go. It tilted. Yay! So look, I'm flipping between these two. There's our page we've been working on. There's our original page we were trying to build. <laughs> Congratulations. You did it. I'm so proud of you. Now, I hope that you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.